What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be continuing with our zombie AI in Unreal Engine 4. Now before I start with this video I just want to apologise if my breath seem laboured. I've had a bit of a problem with my heart uh, and I'm having difficulty speaking but I'm going to try making this video regardless. So um, in the last episode we left uh, with setting up the attack animations and there's just a few things which we need to fix. So uh, a couple of uh, viewers have noticed that once the player uh, is spotted by the zombie AI uh, and the zombie AI runs after the player, he's going to continue attacking while running and this looks really really weird. So we're going to fix this uh, and that's what I'm going to do first and then we're going to be adding our health bar and our um, HUD to the player screen. So, um, first, let's go into our behavior tree. And this is where we're going to do the first fix of the day. So, down here we've got our simple parallel. So, this is what we set up to do the two tasks simultaneously, where we chase the player and then attack the player. Uh, right click on this task here and then add a decorator to this. And the decorator we're going to add is the blackboard decorator. So on the blackboard decorator, um, select that and on the details panel, uh, change the blackboard key from self actor to uh, player is in range. And then uh, make sure that that is set like so. Save that and we are done with the behavior tree. We've just got a few more things to do. We're going to mod modify one of our tasks uh, to prevent the zombie from continuously attacking. If we run back in, you can see that there is still a bit of issues. If I were to um, run away from him, he still does attack. So we're just gonna fix that now. Now there is a um, melee attack range here. For the time being, I'm going to override this number and we are going to uh, do things slightly differently until I figure out a, a cleaner way of doing things. Uh, so this will work initially, but we're just going to change up, up, up a few things until I can get a perfect solution, which will probably be in the next episode. So exit out of your behavior tree and go into your tasks. And you've got the attack player task here. Just want to open up that. So this is what we've got currently. Uh, let me just navigate to my notes. Here we go. So we're going to be changing up quite a few things here. So first of all, you want to break the link between attack player and the cast to zombie character. And you can do that just, just by holding down Alt and then clicking on the uh, the uh, pin and then it undoes those um, links. And then just drag these away here. So next what we want to do is drag from the zombie character and we want to cast yet again to our third person character. So we can get variables from both our zombie character and from our third person character. So cast to third person character. Now this is a bit expensive on the CPU, uh, which is uh, how the computer does all of the processing. But for the time being, this works. And until I implement interfaces, which uh, which hopefully uh, will be uh, shortly, uh, this is what we'll be using. So from uh, from the cast to third person character, we want to uh, make a conditional. So hold down B and then do a left click, and that's going to make a branch. So this is flow control. And then you want to hook up the ex the execution to the branch. Uh, and then from here, um, break the link from the attack player and then move that up to here. Okay, and then set that into true. Cool. So now um, the, the, the function attack player is being used by the zombie characters. So we're going to get the zombie character and set the function to be the target. Uh, and these these lines are sort of oversecting um, our other nodes here. So to rewrite those, just double click anywhere on this line. It should highlight, uh, and then you can make a reroute node. And just do that again and make it look a bit nicer, just to uh, neaten things up a bit. Cool. So um, next, what you want to do is, as our third person character, we want to get the player controller. So the the player character. So get player character and then from here we can get all sorts of information about where the player is so from the player character drag off of this and get distance 2 
So you might uh, be familiar with this node. We've, we've used it in, uh, in another function, I mean, another task. Uh, and we're essentially gonna do the same as we've done in that one. So drag off from the control pawn uh, from the event receive execute AI. So the control pawn is our zombie pawn. Uh, and we want to plug that into other actor. And again, you can just make another rewrote node just to tidy things up a bit. Like so, perfect. From here, uh, so our target is the player character and the other actor is our zombie character, so just make sure that that's right. Now we're gonna do a bit of float mathematics here, so drag off of the return, um, sorry, less than, yeah, so we drag off of the return value and then get less than or equal to the float. And then this is where we're gonna be using our 150 number. So you might have seen on the behavior tree, we've got the melee attack range 150, we're just gonna be using the same number 150 here. And then we'll find a way to reference those two numbers together. So you can easily modify uh, the melee attack range, uh, which is this number here from the behavior tree. It'll make more sense later on. So move that up here. And then you want to plug in the return value of the Boolean into the branch and that's selected the conditional. So now we need to uh, finish executes because now we've got a true and a false. So copy the finish execute because we are gonna need another one of these and then plug that one into the false. So let's work through things logically here. So if the distance uh, from the player and the zombie is not less than or equal to 150, it's gonna be false and it's gonna finish the execute. If we don't finish the execute, it's gonna get stuck. And then we can plug the rest of this, so the delay of 2.6 uh, and the finish execute on this end into the attack player and true. Cool. Uh, let's see the attack player function here. This, okay, cool. So now we need to change our attack player function. So at the, at the moment, uh, this is all that the attack player function does, is it just plays an animation. So what we're gonna be doing is setting up some of our uh, health uh, systems for our player, uh, which is super straightforward. So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a HUD. And you can put this into your third person BP blueprints folder. So right click on the context menu down here on your content browser, go down to user interface and select widget blueprint. Now we're gonna rename this to WBP, so that stands for Widget Blueprint, and then call this HUD. Okay, save that, perfect. Okay, so now this is the widget editor. So uh, up here you've got your palette, you've got the hierarchy, you've got the animations, which, which we may do later. We've got, we've got timelines for the set animations and compiler results. We've also got another details panel up here and then we've got two parts to the widget editor. We've got the designer and the graph. Uh, we will be using this, but we don't need any of these nodes, so you can just get rid of those. Perfect. So go into the, the designer and just drag this out. So there's this little handle down here. Drag this out from 720p to 1080p or whatever the native resolution of your monitor is. So we are going to create a little health bar here. So uh, go to panel, this is on the Palette, go to, to panel, and then drag out from here a horizontal box. There we go. Now, from the horizontal box, we want this to be, um, let's say, 40. Yeah, yeah, we we can leave that at 40, but we'll make the um, the length of it so the size x 500. So this gives us plenty of space. Next, we're going to anchor this because if we don't anchor it. When your screen size scales, so when you go from um, the normal viewport mode to the full screen mode, it's not going to uh, move around the screen correctly. It's not going to anchor. So select the anchor, and we're going to do the top left. So perfect. And then select the position X to be 100, and the position Y to be 100 also. So this gives it a nice position up here. So 100 and 100 away. Great. Okay. So we need to add three different elements into here. We need to add a progress bar, which is gonna hold our, our health information. We're gonna have a text box, which is also gonna hold our health and just a little um, cosmetic uh, bit of text just to say 
uh, that we are looking at our health bar. So we've got a horizontal box here. Drag off of uh, the text and push that into the horizontal box. And that's automatically going to make it a child. Perfect. So uh, from here, just select the, the vertically aligned center. Uh, and the, in fact, yeah, we can leave that. And then change the text from here to be a plus arrow or health or whatever you want to do. Um, for me, I'm just putting a, a plus arrow because that is the symbol for health. Next, we want to drag in another one. So do exactly the same as you did before. Drag text, put that into the horizontal box, and then we are going to uh, set zero, zero. So this is going to be the placeholder text for our health. And again, you can just set this to vertically aligned center. Now we can add in our progress bar. So just do the same and drag it in. Perfect. But now you'll notice this time it's really small. So change this from auto to fill and it's going to change to the exact size you want. I want this to be a bit thinner. It looks a bit nicer when it's a bit thinner. So I'm just going to go vertically aligned center and it's going to look like that. I can add a bit of spacing between the the health number and the health bar. Sorry, excuse me. By adding a bit of padding, and I'm going to add about ten pixels of padding to the. Sorry, not the right, but the left. There we go. So there's a bit of spacing now there. Cool. So uh, next, we're going to give this a different color. So at the moment, it's blue. I'm going to change it to about about red. There we go. Uh, and if we were to uh, select the percent, uh, you can see that that's the sort of red it looks. And then I'm going to leave it at 0.5. Uh, it, it won't matter what percentage you leave this as default because it is going to change based on the player's health anyway. Okay, cool. So now that we're done with our HUD for the time being, uh, leave that open, but just pop that up here with the rest of your tabs because we are going to be needing it later. So go into your third person character and here we are going to set up a number of variables. So make a new variable here called player health. And this variable is going to be a float so we can store a, a decimal number. So go to float and then select the, um, the instance editable as true so we can reference this variable outside of our blueprint. Compile that and save that. Now. Let's draw our um, HUD onto our player screen. So find a nice blank uh, space on your event graph. Uh, and we are going to introduce a new type of event. And this event is called begin play. So begin play is going to run a series of nodes when the game starts. So go here to add events, uh, game, sorry, no, not game, uh, but uh, event begin play. There we go. And we are going to create our HUD. So we drag off of this and do create widget. There we go, create widget. And then when it asks for an owning player, just specify get player controller. Next, we need to add this to our HUD. So just drag off of this and do add to HUD. Sorry, add to viewport. Next, we need to select a, a class for our widget constructor. And this is just going to be the widget we just made. So here we go, WBP underscore HUD. Perfect. <coughs> um, next, just to uh, ensure that nothing can go wrong, specify the input mode. So um, set input mode, I can't type, as game only. And then drag from the player controller into there. And again, to, to neaten things up a bit, Use a rewrite node and just tidy things up a bit. Perfect. Next, hide our mouse cursor. So uncheck context sensitive and then show mouse cursor. Ooh. Set show mouse cursor. Leave that as false. And then again, get your player controller node and drag that into there. Perfect. So now if we were to compile this, save this and jump into our game, we've now got a health bar. Perfect. But this health bar isn't being told uh, what its value is. As you remember, it's just halfway through, which is 0.5. We need to um, link our health bar, so our percent bar, sorry, from our HUD 
to this variable here on player health. So for the default um, value for the player health, I'm going to set this to 1. So I'm just assuming here that when you start the game, you're on full health. But what you could do is on your games is that the player starts with half health or really low health and they have to find med kits in order to um, survive uh, a night in the game. Uh, but I'm just going to leave this on 1. You can put this as whatever you want, depending on how hard you want the game to be. So um, let's let's set up the functionality with the um, progress bar first. So go back into your HUD and go on to the progress bar. And then on the progress, you'll see that there's a bind button next to the percent. Click that and then select create binding. And then this is going to create a function and a variable. So now these two are now referenceable in blueprints. Let me just reference my notes here. Sorry about this. Perfect. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to get a variable from our third person character. And you guessed it, it's this player health variable here. So drag it from the get percent zero and cast to our third person character. There we go. And then as our third person character, we want to get the variable inside of this character. So we're going to get player character. There we go. So that's going to get all of the variables which we have on our player character. Then from here, we can get as third person character, get health. So get player health. Perfect. And because this is instance editable, we can access it outside of the, the variable. I mean, outside of the blueprint. <laughs> so from player health, drag this up to the return value and then put the execution pin into there, like so. And you can neaten this up a bit, however you want, but that is done. You can then comment that and describe what it does. So I'm just going to get player health. It's always important to um, comment your code wherever possible. So when you go back to things, uh, you know what you've done. I'm also going to rename this, so instead of get percent, I'm going to name this get health bar percent. There we go. So it's nice and verbose. Now I want to do the same, but with our text box. So again, go up here to bind, create binding. And instead of doing all of that again, I'm just going to copy and paste exactly what we've done here. So just copy the get player character, cast the third person character and player health. Copy that. Go into your new function, paste it in, like so. Punch that into the cast. And then from the execution, put that into the return node. And then drag the player health into the return value. And what you're going to see is that it, it's actually going to convert the float to a text, like so. You can neaten this up again. You can highlight one or more um, nodes and then press Q and then they will automatically align with each other, just to make it look a bit neater. Compile that and save that. So when we jump back into our game, as you can see, it says 1%. So well, it's, well, it's out of one, and our, our health bar is on full. If I were to say, for example, change our player health from one to 0 0.5, it's gonna be half health. So now that we know it works, let's, um, let's do a slight change to our text number to make it look a bit better. So I'm just going to put that back to one, like so. There we go. You don't have to do that. But what I'm going to do is before we convert our player health to a text value so it can be printed as a um, text, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to times it by a, a, by 100. So do uh, asterisk, which is the multiplication a uh, symbol in mathematics. So you want to do a float by a float. There we go. And then from here, just times it by 100. So this is going to turn it from 1 to 100. Then drag the um, re return value from the multiplication node into the two text float node. And then, of course, straighten them up a bit. Neaten them up a bit. Make them look a bit nicer. There we go. Perfect. That is some clean code. Compile that and save that. Perfect. So now when we jump back in, it's, it's only going to affect 
the um, the text um, function and not the health bar percentage function. And as usual, we're just going to rename this to get health oh, bar number. Something that just makes sense. Oh, spot number wrong. There we go. Number. Okay, cool. So now we're just going to experiment with modifying these values. So this is going to be a temporary piece of code, which we're going to get rid of afterwards. But I just want to demonstrate how things work. I'm, I, I am going to leave a timestamp uh, where you can skip this and we can move on to the next part of the video. So what we're going to do is we're going to create two key bindings to modify our health. So uh, let me just find where we are. Do, 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 do. Perfect. Okay, so for this, I'm going to use the plus and the minus keys on my keyboard. So I'm going to do the plus key. So num plus. And I'm also going to get one for num subtract. There we go. So from here, we are going to get up player health and we're going to drag out from this and set player health. There we go. From here, we're going to drag in pressed into the set. And then we're going to get our player health again, get, and we're going to add on 0 0.1. So add float plus a float, and I add 0 0.1. So this is going to add on one health point. And also, in order to not go above is one or zero, or below zero, we're going to clamp these variables. So these values. So drag off of here and do a clamp clamp on a float. So this is going to set a minimum and a maximum. So it can't go above or below 0 or 1. Perfect. So drag the return value into that. Cool. And we're going to do exactly the same with this one. So just copy that and paste it. But with one slight change, what we're going to do is just instead of addition, we are going to do subtraction. So do float subtract to float plug that into value, and then change that from 1 to 0 0.1. And of course, neaten these up a bit, make them look nice, even though it is temporary. There we go. So, now, if we compile and save, and go back into our game, if I were to use the um, plus and the minus arrows, you can see that it takes away health, and I can add it on. And I can't go above 100% and I can't go below zero. If I were to, for example, get rid of these, uh, this clamp float node, I'll show you what happens now. It is going to allow me to go above and below that number. So here, this is what happens. So I keep on going and I go into the negatives. Obviously, not quite what we want to happen. So just redo those. Perfect. So... Now we've got another thing to do, and then that should be it for the health system at the moment. Uh, so go back into your, your attack um, task, and then expand on the attack player uh, function. So, yeah. so the first thing which we are going to do is we are going to cast to our third person character. Again, we are casting to our third person character because we want to get the variables which it contains. So cast, oh, I can't type very well today. Cast to third person character. And then as our character, we are going to get our, our player character. So get player character, excuse me. Sorry about that. So, and then from here, what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of a delay. And the reason why we're adding a delay is so it allows the animation to sync up with when it takes away health. So here's just an example. So when the zombie swings, um, I, I want the zombie to take away health the moment when the, the zombie's arm touches my player. And I worked out that it's roughly uh, 1.2 seconds in length. So go back to your zombie character and then add in a delay. So drag off of here. Let me just check that I'm still recording. And I am perfect. So drag off of delay. And then perfect. Sorry. And then set this to 1.2. And this should look good when 
we test it out later on. So from here, because we are casting to our third person character, we can get the variables which it's uh, got. So drag off of the as third person character and do set player health. There we go. And then hook up the, the completed pin into the set uh, node. And then again, what we want to do is drag off of the as third person character and want to get player health. There we go. So now this is going to build a target and a um, return value node. And for every uh, attack which the zombie does, we're going to say that it's going to take away two health points. So drag off of the return node and then do a float, take away a float, and then change this from 1.0 to uh, 0.2. Make sure not to set it as negative 0.2, otherwise it's, it is going to cancel it out and it's going to actually add health on, which makes funny mechanics if you think about it. So just neaten those up, perfect. There we go. And then of course what we want to do is want to clamp these uh, values. So clamp the float so the zombie won't keep taking away health after we reach either zero or uh, yeah after we reach zero so you can leave these default values as they are and then plug the return value into the set player health perfect so now that should be it let's compile and save and let's see so perfect so you can see that as the um, zombie takes a swing, as soon as it makes contact, he takes away health. If I were to, for example, remove this or just set the delay to be zero so it does nothing at all, it looks a bit weird, see? So it actually takes away health before he goes in for the attack. So adding that, that 1.2 second delay just makes it look a bit more realistic and makes the gameplay a bit better. Let me just run through everything, make sure that we've got everything done. Uh, I just need to check my notes. Okay, yeah, so there's just a few last things which we need to change for our um, our animations. So um, I'm just going through things and just fine-tuning things to make them all consistent. Uh, so go into your character models, um, zombie one, animations and mvp and what i'm going to do is i'm going to rename the slots so go to window anim, anim slot manager and instead of calling this just upper body i'm going to call this upper body slot uh, just to be more consistent so upper body slot this this also ooh. okay and then we go off okay right well I'll leave that for the time being then. Okay, just ignore that. But this also gives me a good opportunity to explain a few things, which I didn't really get a chance to in the last episode, why we use caching. Now, caching is important when we want to select more than one pose uh, for an output pose. On the default state machine, we can only set one output pose. Obviously, this would replace that. And we can't do more than one. So caching our pose allows us to sort of layer multiple poses on top of each other and then combine them and put them as one output pose, which is why we do it like this. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> Let me just um, make sure that that is all done. Right, okay. And the last thing we're going to do for this episode is we are going to change our um, key bindings on our running and... Uh, walking to use uh, action events. So go into your edit and go into project settings. And this is where we are going to make key bindings. And key bindings are especially useful when you want to, to change them later on down the line. So for example, you package your project uh, and you want to be able to easily uh, change which key does what. So we're gonna make two new action mappings here. So make two of them. And the first one, we are going to do a sprint. And the second one is toggle walk. There we go. Toggle walk. So for the sprint, I am going to, to do left control. Left CTRL. And for the toggle walk, I'm going to do left shift. This is my personal 
preference. You can set these to whatever you want. I'm, I'm just doing this with what's most comfortable with my hands. So that's done. We can exile that. Now we need to replace these left control and the left shift nodes with our action mappings, which we just made. So the left control is for my run. So um, I'm going to do sprint. There we go. And I'm going to Put the pressed into the 600 and the released into 375 and then i'm going to do exactly the same on our walk so toggle walk there we go just do exactly the same perfect except for we're putting this into a flip-flop because it's a toggle walk and they should still work perfect so let's let's just go over what what we've done again so we've added a player health Perfect. And what we're going to do in the next episode is we are going to add a death screen and so that when the player is dead, uh, he is the the player is, is going to play a death animation and the zombie will stop attacking. And we're also going to add in health packs as well. So I hope you did in, enjoy this video. Guys, if you did, a like would be greatly appreciated. And remember to subscribe uh, so you don't miss any future uploads. Uh, again, I'm sorry uh, that this video is a bit rushed. Um, I have been feeling a bit under the weather. Uh, so hopefully um, I can return to a normal schedule very, very soon. And as always, thanks for watching.